Hey Gifted Crafters, welcome to Saturday Crafternoon. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining. I'm so happy to see you guys out there. I am really excited today because, you know, we're starting to kind of move forward and make a little bit of progress. It's a real slow process for me, but we're coming to it. So let's just um, talk about those that are tuning in for the first time so if you're new here and you've never been to any of my lives i host these weekly live sessions on saturdays 12 noon eastern standard time and we talk about all things crafting sewing embroidery crocheting knitting 
you name it, we talk about everything here. And I like for everyone to kind of share tips, tricks, and ideas. So please feel free to jump into the chat, make a couple of friends, share some ideas. And it's really helping those who sometimes will have an Etsy shop, or maybe you're thinking of doing a little craft show, or just want to make some gifts for some friends. So it's just a great place and a safe atmosphere where you can feel free to, you know, share your ideas. If you have questions, please put them out there and we all just try to help each other and make this just a fun place to be. So my name is Nancy with Gifts HQ and let's just say hello to a couple of friends out there that I see. So I do see Sassy, I see Marion, Judy, Jackie, Evimar, Donna, Diane, Boricua Sewing and Crafts, and Amy Bulls. Thank you guys all for showing up today. I have some pretty exciting stuff to share with you. Before we do that, let's look at some of our holidays because we have a couple today. So we have Farmer's Day. That's their first holiday. We also have Swim A Lap Day. For these swimmers out there, you know, go ahead and take a lap. <laughs> And then we have Upcycling Day, which I'm excited about because that kind of kind of tunes in with some of the stuff I'm going to share with you today. So I wanted to kind of focus on making some scrap buster type projects that are quick and easy to do. And they're using materials that are probably already in your home. So that's exciting because you don't really have to go out and buy anything. So I'm pretty sure all of you, especially these craft crafters that are out there you guys all have your craft rooms and you have all your stuff kind of in the room and I'm pretty sure you can find some stuff to make this project so I'm excited to um, see all of that today and share that with you and oh my gosh I see all these people talking in the chat <laughs> and that makes me so happy I'm so glad you guys are um, mingling and you know sharing tips and ideas with each other okay so if you didn't tune in last week, um, I showed you some memorable DIY Father's Day gifts ideas that you can make um, and you can share those with your friends. And I also shared with you one of the memorable ones that I made um, since my dad recently passed away. Um, I shared some embroidered handkerchiefs. So if you didn't catch that live, go ahead and catch it. It was live number 45. Today's actually live number 46, which is pretty exciting. I'm getting up to live number 50 soon. I can't believe it's been 50 lives since I first went live. But um, I'm excited to share those things with you. So if you didn't catch that, go ahead and check out last week's live because I did share a lot of ideas that you can make for Father's Day presents or if you have a birthday coming up for your dad or uncle or grandpa, those would be also some great gift ideas that you can make. So go ahead and catch that. Um, if you noticed, and if you're new for the, um, tuning in for the first time, we do start our lives off with a trivia. And today is the last Saturday of June. So we'll be tallying up the points and next week we'll be announcing our second quarter trivia master. And what we do is we go ahead and start the lives off with these trivia questions and we will kind of look through the chat and keep track of all the answers that everyone gave and on a weekly basis on the community we'll put the point standings on where you stand now by the end of the quarter we'll go ahead and select our trivia master and i might have a little gift for them <laughs> so go ahead and jump into the chat when you tune into these lives and participate in the trivia it's a lot of fun and it's a great way to just kind of learn a little bit of tidbits from all types of crafts that are out there. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Um, I'm excited to announce our Trivia Master for next week and I hope you guys have a lot of fun with that. Okay, so another thing um, that I wanted to do this week was focus on the word inspiration. Like, what does inspiration really mean to you? There's so many things that inspire people. People can get inspired by a photo, by a place, you know, just by any kind of material object. And that's kind of what happened to me for this week's live. Um, I got a little inspiration from something that I saw 
online and I went ahead and ordered it. And then when I got it, it's like my mind just got blown away and all of these ideas were coming to my head on how I wanted to make it a little bit better and a little bit different. So I went ahead and did that and I just wanna share that with you today. So let me just check to see if I missed anything here. Uh, let's see. You know, I think I've gotten everything that I wanted to um, tell you guys. So let's go ahead and I can start kind of just showing you guys what inspired me. So this is just something that I got from Timo. And you guys all know that Timo, you know, if you haven't checked them out, um, I probably have a little link in the description that will show the Timu side and um, if not I'll try to put it in later on but um, you can order from there and it's relatively very low price there the quality is not like the highest quality items but you can get some pretty decent deals on there um, so this is one of the items that I thought was really cute and if you don't recognize what this is it's a towel topper so this is actually a kitchen towel that got sewn together with a top and they kind of decorate it and make it look like a little girl's dress now it came with a little hanger so i kind of hang it on to uh, one of the knobs that i have on my pantry door and it just looks absolutely adorable and there's so many things that you can make with these towel toppers so i did purchase this and it's a little dress has a little rose on it and they even put on the inside a little piece of fabric to really make it look like a dress. So let me give you guys a little bit of a closer look. Now, I think it's a microfiber type material. So it's really neat, I think, that, you know, how they put this together. I thought it was cute. And I'm sure that there's tons of videos out there with all kinds of different ones that you can make. And you can think about this if you have someone that maybe just got a house removed. This would be a great type of gift that you could give them for their kitchen. So if you're doing kitchen towels, you can do the toppers for the towels and make it like a set. You know, you can also make the oven mitt or the oven, um, the mitt that you put on your hand or the mitts that you just, you know, grab with your hands. You can do all of it like as a really cute set. So I think this was a really, really cute idea. And I thought, you know, this should be relatively simple to make. So if I open it up on the inside, you can see that they just use the serger to kind of serge the edges to put them together. And then down here, you'll see where all of the towels met. And you can see they kind of pleated it because they, they just folded it and then sewed it. So they kind of pleated it with the material on the top. And I'll try to turn it inside out so you guys can really see. And then all they're doing here is they added the material and then went ahead and surged the rest of it. And then they added, of course, the little arms. So really, really cute, not too difficult to make, but I wanted to kind of simplify it just a little bit more. So I thought I can probably try to do something like this and just, you know, kind of make it my own. So that's what I'm going to, you know, just, share with you today and there's a couple different ways you can do it so if you don't have a serger it's fine you can do it without the serger i went ahead and did it without the serger because i didn't think too many people may not have a serger but i will be also doing some with the serger and i'll be sharing those with you on my facebook page so if you haven't signed up to our facebook group gifts hq usa um, it's a really great group and we like to share pictures and ideas together. So go ahead and, you know, put some of your ideas on there. If maybe you already have some, um, towel toppers, share them with us. Cause I'd really like to see the different styles that there are out there, but there's so many that you can do for not just gifts. 
Um, you can also do this for the holidays. You got Christmas coming up. You can make some really cute little dresses for Christmas. Maybe someone who just turning into a grandma and you know, they want to have the little dress or maybe it's just a little dress that you've always worn as a child and you remember you know you can make it as a cute towel topper you can also make little boys one doesn't have to be a dress you can just think about so many different things that you can make so this was kind of just like my, my little inspiration to make something so let me show you what i used to go ahead and make my own so the first thing that you're going to need is of course you're going to need some fabric and you really don't need a ton of fabric you could use what you have in your stash this is just a fat quarter it's by waverly that i got from walmart i don't even know when it was that i got it it was some time ago but i had it sitting on my shelf i really love the colors so i went ahead and i used um, I believe it was this fabric here on the bottom. So it was really, really cute. And they have tons of fat quarters that are out there. You don't need a ton of fabric, which is the great thing about this project. So you can go ahead and use your fat quarter or use what you have on hand. Um, you really don't need, I think something like a 12 inch by 12 inch will be totally fine for this project. Another thing that I used were some things that I have been showing you guys that I even purchased from the dollar store or you can also just get it from Hobby Lobby, Walmart. You know, there's tons of different places where you can get all sorts of different rickrack items. So this is one of the rickrack items that I got from the dollar store and this is the heart ribbon lace. And I believe I've showed you guys this before. Um, it brings, 1.3 yards of it so plenty to go around you can use these or any type of other type of rickrack for your project because you're really just using this to decorate it so let me show you some of the other items that i have in rickrack so here's one that i got from hobby lobby has a little bit of a ruffle type of effect that's what it looks like And you know, all of these things come in multiple different colors, different sizes, different things. It really will all depend on how you want to decorate your towel topper. And you know, just look at the fabric choices that you do as well. And then this is another one. It's just pretty common on this one. I believe this one I got from the dollar, dollar store too. This is just a pretty blue. And I thought that this would be really cute with the items that I'm doing as well. Now, I also used some fabric from the dollar store. So, of course, got some of that as well. Um, and then what I did was I went ahead and I made some templates. So, let me just put these over to the side. And you can see here, this is... Um, the Dollar Tree um, fabric that I used and I just used I think it was one or two rolls of the fab the Dollar Tree fabrics that come in the roll this is just a plain white nothing really special to this but all I did was I made myself a template and then I cut the fabric out using that template and this is what basically it would look like once I finish cutting it out. Let me just move these over here so you guys can see that better. So let me just show you the templates that I've created. They're very simple and some of them you can just freehand yourself. Now this template here is just something that if you fold up your fabric you'll see it kind of fits in perfectly and this is using a 12 by 12 um, piece of fabric I folded it in half and then folded it again and then just followed this template here 
this template would be here would be like the body where the actual towel would connect to the topper and this would be considered the sleeve and then i just made a little kind of quarter shaped um, circle which would be considered to be the neckline and then you have to have on the bottom you want the sleeve and you want to cut this at a rounded edge as well so there's tons of templates and i'm going to do a little tutorial for you guys on how i created this and the templates so you can learn the real step by step um, on how to do some of these so stay tuned for those that will be coming up that'll be my next video that i'll be working on and once I've done this template, then I went and I just put the template on top. I did use some pins to pin it down. And then I just took my rotary cutter and went ahead and cut this shape out. And then once I do that, I go ahead and unfold. And you're left with the template that you're going to need in order to do this towel topper. Uh, you will need two of these and I'll explain all of the details once I put the video together on how to make these. But this is one of the templates that I did. Um, and then I did do a second template that was a little bit more, this was kind of more the simpler one. So it's just the shape of the actual shirt. And then all I did was fold a piece of paper in half. This is a pretty simple one. So if you're a real, real beginner, this would definitely be one that you'll want to start with. Um, you just typically fold the paper in half. You're just going to cut it down here, make your little sleeve. And then again, about a quarter of a um, circle on here. And in order to make your circle, like you could really use anything. Like even if I were to take this little um, rickrack item and just place it here and then just draw the line on the paper and then cut it out that way, that would totally work. So don't feel like you need to have special tools or anything just to be able to make that perfect circle because you can use all kinds of items that you have already in your home to help you make that. Um, you can use a jar, you can use a glass, you know, anything that has that round shape. All you have to do is take your pen, mark the paper, and then go ahead and cut it out with your rotary cutter or a pair of scissors. So definitely once you have that in place, I do make an indicator as to where you're going to want your fold to be when you're putting this onto your fabric. And then when you open it up, you'll have your topper. And again, you would probably make two of these in order to do your topper. So you would have the front and the back. And then the third template that I made was kind of um, using the inspiration that I got here. So using this dress format that has the two little um, arms here, I went ahead and just made this template to kind of help me out with that. So what I did here was pretty much easy. Just folded again a piece of paper, went ahead and cut this out, did a little um, maybe about two inches or so of height for the straps. And then I have placed some indicators on where I wanted the fold to be. And then once you open that up, you know, and you put it on your fabric, you'll know exactly where you need to cut. Um, but you'll want to go ahead and keep it folded so that your fold is in place when you're doing your cutting. So these are just some really quick templates that I made. Now I did make them on paper. Once I'm pretty happy with the template, I would go ahead and I've shown in other videos how you can go to the Dollar Tree and get those clear plastic cutting mats. I use those a lot to for my templates. So first I start off on paper, you know, and I kind of put it together on the paper and I kind of work it out to make sure, you know, it, it comes out the way I want it to. And when I'm pretty happy with that, I'll then take this paper, lay it on top of the Dollar Tree clear cutting board and then I will go ahead and mark it with a Sharpie, take a pair of scissors, and then I would have a plastic template that I can reuse over and over and over again. And it's a great way to, you know, keep that template in place because the papers, you know, they go bad, they tear. 
you know the plastic is just a little bit easier and will last a lot longer so i think that that's really a cute you know way to just kind of display your um creativity and bring your templates to life that will last a long time now i made these three templates but you can make all kinds of different templates like i said these towel toppers i've seen the ones for the girls i haven't really seen any for the boys and i'm sure that they can make some really cute ones out there so there was just a bunch of things that you can do with towel toppers um, it doesn't have to be a little dress or look like a little boy thing there's so many different things you can do with little pockets you know just any kind of design and other things that you can add besides just the plain old embellishments that I've talked about is that you can also embroider on your towel, right? You can have a really pretty saying on here. Maybe you want to put the person's name or you can even put it on the top, you know, so there's so many different ways that you can change this up. If you have a pretty little um, quilt block that you like, maybe you can put something like that or you can put a patch on here or you know there's just so many different it's kind of endless it goes on and on and on and so many things that you can do to embellish your towel topper and these are just some ideas that you know right out of my head things that you can do but i'm sure there's tons tons more and if you guys have any or maybe you guys have created some of your towel toppers share them on our facebook facebook group or let us know on the chat because I think that this is really a fun project to make and it's quick and easy, really doesn't take a lot of time to make it at all. So I think you would really, really like it. This is all about your inspiration. It's all about how people see different things. You know, it's just a fun way to kind of just pick things out, you know, and make them your own, you know, so it's, it's a nice way to bring things together. So this is um, the one that I got that inspired me. And I've showed you guys the templates and some of the materials that you'll need. Now there are a couple other things um, that I did use. And I didn't show you guys, this is just the fabric that I cut out from that other template. And you can see here, one, one thing I, I forgot to mention. So when we talked about the template and the fold, you want to be very mindful of that because when you go to cut your fabric out and you have it on that fold, you know, you makes it a lot easier because then when you unfold it, you'll notice that we wanted the fold to be here as well and you're going to open it up. And the reason for that is because you're going to be able to use this as your opening. And there's different ways that you can open it. Like um, I have the little hanger that kind of came with it um, to kind of hang it onto my pantry door. Um, they do sell these as well, but you can also make it so that you have an opening on here and you can add a little button or maybe a little snap or you can do some Velcro so that you can kind of take it on and off if you want to put it on, let's say your oven door and just kind of hang it there or maybe on your refrigerator. So you'll want to have a little opening so that it makes it easy for you to take it on and off. So that's just something I wanted to mention on here. But again, some of the other items that I used to help make my projects, I did use stitch a seam. And this is stitch a seam too. It has a quarter inch seam and all it is, it's just, um, double stick fusible tape and I'll give you guys a close-up of that. I picked this up at Hobby Lobby um, quite some time ago. Uh, let me just not cover the quarter inch so you can see that. It's very simple. I'll show you what it looks like. Has the directions in the back as well. Very, very easy to use. And all it is really this one came with two two rolls more than enough of what you're going to need you i mean really literally only needed maybe about one or two um loops of this it's very very little and all this is is just a long piece of tape it's fusible on both sides 
and it does have a peeling a piece of uh i guess protector that you peel off and you stick it onto the fabric and then you put the top of the fabric on top that kind of seals it together then you just kind of grab your iron and iron it down and the steam from the iron will kind of adhese the two uh, materials together and that's what helps you to apply some of this rickrack or other designs that you have that you would put onto your towel topper so let me show you a couple of the other items that i used now i did use towels that i got from my local walmart but you can also get towels from the dollar store you know and some of the ones from the dollar store have already like a little design on it um, or you can get just the plain ones and then you know maybe like i said embroider it put a patch on it or you can just kind of leave it the way it is so there's a lot of different things that you can do another one that you can get um, and i believe i got these off of amazon some time ago um, you've got ones that have the little fray on it here Let's see if i can get a little closer for that you can see the little fray on the bottom and that'll kind of help if you're making the little dress it kind of gives it a little bit of extra you know just a little oomph on there make it a look, look a little different and i thought that would be cute and then there's other things that you can do where you can just get a towel that has a ruffle on it already. Now you can add your own ruffle. Um, if you have a gathered gathering foot, you can do that, or you can just kind of wing it yourself. And on this one, it looks like this was just a regular towel, as you can see here. And then they added on the ruffle. So you can see on the right side of the towel you've got the little ruffle there and that's really cute because it'll add a little bit of extra to that the little tea towel that you're doing so that makes it a little bit of an extra touch um, then you have other types of towels that have just you know like some stripes on it and you can coordinate the towel topper to go with that or you can just get plain towels here that have already a printed design on it as well so there's all kinds that you can do. Again, here's one that I just got from my local Walmart. I actually took the towel and I cut it in half. Now, there's different ways to do the towel toppers. You can keep the towel in whole and keep it like that, although it is kind of thick and sometimes it may be a little bit difficult to sew together. Or you can cut them in half like I did and then just use the bottom half. Now you can use your gathering foot to kind of gather these together, or you can just kind of gather them yourselves with your hands and just kind of pin them down and then sew it. Like I tried to do that and just give the dress a little bit of a flared type of look. So that was pretty easy to do. You know, it's just a matter of patience, putting them kind of together, pinning them down and then sewing it across see so i'm looking here see let me stop and just pause for a second because i know i gave you guys a lot of info uh let's see taisha banks hey how are you she says i love the in the hoop towel toppers and since i'm taking an iq designer class on tuesday night i'm going to ask jerry how to create a dress towel topper to make in the hoop awesome that's a great idea oh nice i like you're taking designer classes that's pretty cool let us know where that is <laughs> nice and she says my sewing center closed so jerry decided to do the class via zoom oh well but actually i wouldn't mind zoom taisha let us know you know give us some of that information where'd you get that from i'd like to find out about that nice <laughs> And now Donna, I saw Donna was having some issues and she hasn't, hasn't been crafting for a while because she's had some issues with her hands and stuff. Um, so I hope that you feel better soon, Donna. I did see that scroll up real quick. I kind of lost it somewhere in there, but um, I did see that and I hope you feel better soon. I hope you get to crafting again really soon. <laughs> Judy says, oh, that sounds like fun, Taisha. <laughs> yeah, it does awesome 
All right, so let me share with you guys some of the projects that I was able to make. Um, now, again, my time's kind of limited with, you know, everything I've had going on, but I tried to do the best I could. I kind of sped through some of this stuff. So it might not be the best quality, but, you know, it's what I could um, kind of get out. Oh, one more thing before I forget. They have Crafter Square at the Dollar Tree store has these fastener dots that you can buy. They're like these little Velcro circles. So as I indicated on some of these, you may want to like, let's say, snip this and have it open. And then maybe put a little bit of a Velcro so you can open it and close it. So you can put it and attach it to either your um, to either your oven door or your refrigerator door, or wherever it is that you want to kind of hang it on if you don't want to use the little hanger. So that's another item that's available and out there for you guys to use. And that's if you have just a regular Velcro strip, you could do that too and just cut the, the pieces out. This is just nice that it's in a little um, fusible circle. So let me move this over to the side. And this is one of the towel toppers that I was able to make. And this one just kind of reminded me of like a little um, school dress. I don't know why. It just did. <laughs> um, it's a little white um, fabric on the top. And I did use the towel that I got from Walmart. And I cut it in half like I indicated before. So this is the other half that's left over. And all I did was then kind of pinch them to kind of create a little bit of a ruffled flare effect of the actual towel. And then for the topper, you know, I use the Rick Rack to add a little bling to it. And then I use some of the other Rick Rack to give it a little bit of that ruffle effect. And then I added a little button on here. It's kind of hard to see. Let me move this up a little closer. I added the little button just to give it a little bit extra Let's see if I can position this correctly for you guys. You can see the little button that I added on there. Just gave it a little bit of extra little kick. Now, I just thought it was cute, you know, something you can just kind of hang there. And it's really it looks cute, you know, it gives that little curious thing. And then people see that in your kitchen. I was like, oh, that's really cute, you know. And I, when I saw this one from Timo, I said, oh, that's a cute idea. And then I just thought, you know, I can kind of make my own. And so that's what kind of inspired me. And I just kind of started making some of my own here. You can see it's very different from the one that I actually got from um, Timo. But, you know, I wanted to kind of do my own version. And this was using the, it's one of the templates that I created here. And I'll share these templates with you. Um, this was using the template here. And what I'll do is I'll provide you guys with the templates so you can download them and kind of just work them through yourselves. But I thought this was a really cute one that you can put in your kitchen. Again, you can kind of embroider a name on here if you wanted to, or you can put a design down on the bottom of the towel. It's really easy to make, really didn't take a lot of time. And again, it used a lot of the materials that I already had, which was awesome. <laughs> now, another one that I did make was using a red towel. And that is this one here. So this one I made using the fat quarter that I showed you earlier. This was some of the leftover fabric. So you can see I really didn't use all that much fabric. You still have so much left. So if I wanted to make a whole bunch of other toppers, I definitely can do that with all of the fabric that's remaining in this bundle. Um, but I did take that. I did use a little bit of ribbon on this one. Not too much. Just some that I had left over lying around. Um, and I used the whole towel on this one. I didn't cut it in half. I kept it as a whole. And then I went ahead and used the Rick Rack. And on this Rick Rack, I did use the steam stitch. 
or stitch a steam what is it steam steam a seam sorry i keep getting the name all mixed up <laughs> i did use this to kind of put this together and hold it in place and then i also used it on the neckline just kind of to give it a little bit of an extra um just a little extra to kind of make it pop a little bit and then of course you've got your arms in here now i left this completely open and you can undo the ribbon so you can put it on take it take it off or put it on to your oven door you know how you have that little bar you know it makes it easy for you to just kind of slip on and slip off um, but if you have the little hanger you can do that too i'll put the little hanger on and you can just kind of hang it like that on you know a little knob or something that you have in your kitchen and i thought this would be really cute and you can make such cute ones for like christmas thanksgiving things like that and i think that would be really cute they're still very handy handy because they're towels that you can still use you can throw this in the wash um nothing will get damaged but you know it's a really cute idea and you can change it up and change things in your kitchen all the time so you know it's just a really cute way to do it <laughs> i see judy says that's fancy for the elegant dinner parties yeah great idea you know if you're having a dinner party you can do something that's related or maybe a birthday party and you put the birthday um boy or girl's name on here and make it like a little birthday suit so it'd be cute too <laughs> donna says i have the tabletop can snap so i always try to use plastic snaps for securing projects exactly that's another thing you can use besides the velcro the velcro or button you can use the snaps you know that's a great idea and you can actually use the snap and make it part of the decoration let's say you wanted to do a little soldier for um christmas you can use the little snaps here for as part of the design for the soldier so that's a great idea donna let's <laughs> Judy says do you like those plastic snaps just don't think I would like them I can't bring myself to try them give it a try Judy at first I was a little frustrated with them when I first started learning how to use them but then I got used to it and now I, I use them all the time for my projects Taisha says I have that red fabric I purchased it to make teacher gifts awesome <laughs> one minute tip she says wow i really like this one it reminds me of the 1950s bopper dresses or whatever they're called <laughs> yeah awesome that's true our key i think that's true yeah it kind of does look like that let's see very cute borico says i would be afraid to use it and mess it up this would make a cute gift for a grandma this would be great for parties amy says i make reusable menstrual pads for the keep girls in school project for in Guyana oh and we use the plastic cam snaps they work well you see Amy uses them as well dinner party is a nice idea you can make matching dinner napkins yep how do I come up with these things like I said just inspiration like yeah I can just look at something and my head just kind of goes crazy with ideas you know there's so many things that come up in my head on things that you can do and different ways that you can make it you know rather than just going to the store and buying it because i'm sure you look in timo it's it's probably not an expensive item you can just buy it yeah anybody can just buy it but wouldn't it be better if you can say hey i made that <laughs> and you can kind of make it your own and and twist it any way you want you know you can personalize it there's just so many things let's see Oh, Donna says, using the Pelon Pelix foam stabilizer would give it the top, would give the top rigidity and it would stand up if you tie with the ribbon. Yes, that's a great idea, Donna. I did not use any type of interfacing on the towel toppers, but that is a great idea. It is a little flimsy, um, but I do have it kind of hanging on the hanger, so that kind of still keeps the, the, shape in place because I have it on the hanger but for those of you who maybe don't want to use the hanger and you're planning on doing the opening with the velcro or the snaps or anything buttons or things like that then you may want to consider using that stabilizer to just give it a little bit extra of that form so that it stays in place so great great idea thanks for the tip Donna let's 
the Taisha said there are two sizes of cam snaps and many people don't know that. It's best to purchase the longer one. Great tip. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> I use the longer prong plastic snaps for the layered in the hoop projects. Ha! Ah. <laughs> Donna says, my head goes crazy trying to figure out the easier way to do the project. Yes. <laughs> so hopefully, you know, I've worked out a lot of the kinks for you because it, it, it took me in a while to kind of just put the, um, put the templates together. So, you know, it's something that, you know, I play around with when I'm looking at the templates and learning how to pull things. Um, I play around with it a lot and there's a lot of like, well, you know, I didn't like how the sleeves came out. I didn't, I thought this was too long, too short, you know? And so I play around with the templates and before I come to my final template and then bring it over to the fabric and actually make the cut. So that's the great thing about doing it on paper. You know, I can redo these a bunch of times, you know, and you can as well, so, you know, so you can make, let's say, the shirt if you want to make it shorter or do you want to make it longer. You know, I made it a little long because I was planning on maybe just embroidering or putting some kind of design. In the beginning, I was thinking I can put little buttons all the way down. You know, there's so many things that go through my head and sometimes I start off with one idea and I end up with something totally different. <laughs> but it's okay. So it's all part of that creativity and maybe a little bit of ADD that I have going on. So, you know, that's one of the great things about these templates though, is as you create them on paper, you can change them up as much as you want. And then once I'm kind of satisfied with the way that it came out, and I know I'm going to want to do multiples of it, that's when I kind of transfer it over to that clear plastic um, Dollar Tree um, mats. And then that kind of makes it more permanent and I'm able to use it over and over again. So great way to kind of, you know, figure some of these things out. So that's just, you know, my little inspiration for the week and what I was able to kind of come up with and share with you guys. Um, I have one more thing that I thought was a super adorable. Um, I did go with my mom um, to a little place to eat. It's kind of a little outdoorish. Um, area where they sell food and stuff and there were these little booths and they had a booth with a lady selling some crafts so of course I had to kind of walk over and see what they had and they had the cutest things and I had to kind of support you know the local community so I went ahead and I purchased my little martini glass and you can see here it's got a little flower on it and it's a candle and it's made out of gel. So let me try to angle it so you guys can see it. You can see maybe the wicks on the bottom. And it's got like this bluish color and she decorates it with the flower. And they're really, really cute. You know, and it's candles and it has the scents it's like a blue ocean type scent on here. And I thought it was the cutest thing, you know, and she's selling them um, on her little booth, but you could also make these as well. I mean, this is the gel wax that you do for those that um, like to do candle making. You know, you can definitely do that very easily by getting these glasses from the Dollar Tree and then doing the um, wick having the wick stand up and pouring the gel on here to let it harden and then you just kind of decorate it. So really, really cute candle making things. Another one that I did get was this little milkshake. <laughs> How adorable is this with the little cherry on top? Now, <laughs> I had a little oopsie with this so it did fall on me, but I'm still able to kind of salvage it and I'm gonna see what I can do. So you can see it here. It's the little straw with the little cherry on here. And she's got it in this little um, glass that's like a little um, Sunday type glass thing. But it's a candle. It is super, super cute. And she had all kinds of different ones that had like different food items. 
Some of them were um, banana splits. Other ones um, were candles and others were just, you know, um, it was candles and I can't remember what the other thing was that she had on her display. But really, really cute, very creative. And, you know, these are the types of things that I thought would be really, really nice. So, yeah, this is a candle and the little cherry on top is the wick and that's what you would light up. So it's really, really cute. You know, and they have all kinds of different ones that you can get that represent, you know, a little martini. They had a little Bacardi one, you know, I think it's just really cute. And it, it was kind of like my inspiration. So maybe I'll try to make one for a video. Who knows? <laughs> you know, but I thought they were really cute. And I thought, you know, they're a lot of fun, you know, cute little gifts that you can give to someone. They really, really, really cute. And they kind of inspire you to create other things on your own. So these are just, you know, inspirational things. You know, I did want to go ahead and support the local community. So I went ahead and purchased them. But, you know, these are the types of things to look out for that you can actually, you know, just use the things that you see out there as part of your inspiration. So definitely a lot of fun. Well, guys, I think that's all I had to show you today. Um, I hope you really enjoyed it. And I'm going to take my little martini glass and my little Sunday glass here and um, kind of put them around my house, maybe light up the candles. So I think it's really cute. It has a little pineapple on it. So it kind of inspires me to kind of maybe make a little something special for me today. <laughs> now, let's see if I see any more common uh donna says i use to make candles for my shop so i read a lot of articles on candles nice donna please share some of that information with us because that'll be nice to know i like to read about that stuff i'll stick to the wax candles yeah these are the gel candles these are the gel ones and it's kind of weird like to the touch you know i try not to touch it too much but it's uh, it makes me want to touch it some more who oh, no. knows? I really like these. All right, guys. I think that, you know, the hour is just about up. And I hope you guys really enjoyed these gifts. Um, and I hope I was able to inspire you guys to try to, you know, try things out for yourself. Um, look forward for the video to coming out soon. And I hope to be crafting with you soon. Bye, everyone.